Well, hey there, everybody. Today I am going to be repairing a vintage neon clock. This is a General Electric Telecron model 1L415. It was known as the Commerce, and it was introduced in the uh, uh, 1930s and uh, produced at least through the uh, 1950s. They uh, had a neon and a non-neon model. The non-neon version uh, is thinner since the uh, body does not have to accommodate the neon transformer or tube inside. Uh, however, I think the, uh, the neon version is much more interesting, so we'll be working on that today. Uh, this clock is fully functional. However, before I put it into service, I would like to uh, address a few issues that it has. Uh, first, you may be able to tell it uh, the glass face has been broken out, so I'll be replacing the face. Uh, I would like to uh, straighten the hour hand, it's a little bit bent. I will be replacing the power cord and I will be installing a switch that will allow me to control the neon uh, independently of the clock. So uh, let's dig into it. All right, and since the glass face is uh, already gone, I decided to take the hands off the clock face since they're just right here. The second hand is actually press fit into the uh, rotor shaft, which sticks out through the, uh, the front of the clock face here. So this is just press fit on there. It's got little uh, uh, flutes that uh, keep it in there with a the friction fit. The uh, second hand is held on by this little nut, this little brass nut on the threaded shaft. And this one happens to be um, threaded. It's a right-hand thread, normal right-hand thread. So. Uh, screwing it lefty loosey but uh, yeah it's just a, a little knurled knurled brass nut there good luck finding a replacement for that right the hand you can see it's got a it's kind of notched uh, rectangular hole to keep it uh, on the shaft there and the hour hand uh, I believe is press fit on here, so I think I'm gonna have to fight with this one a little bit to get it off, so I'll uh, cut away and bring it back. Uh, well, I couldn't figure out exactly how to get the hour hand off, and I was too afraid of damaging it. It, it appears to be aluminum, or it's, it's, it's very thin, whatever it is, and um, I didn't want to risk uh, breaking the hand, because then that would be a, a whole nother issue. So what I ended up doing is I uh, use this uh, curved a hemostat to lift up underneath that crease where the bend was and then just kind of uh, influence the tip uh, downward to counterbalance or counteract the bend and uh, then ran it through the ran it through the courses of the whole 360 degrees make sure the the uh, hand didn't scrape the face and the issue originally was the uh, minute hand was scraping along the hour hand you can probably see right here where that was scraping. So um, that issue is resolved. Uh, let's continue on with the disassembly. Now the outside of this can has 12 screws holding it together. <laughs> when it sh was shipped to me it had two. Uh, so I added a few more for um, just to keep it together while uh, transporting it here. Um, but the got six screws uh, at the front here, right by the face, those hold the face to the back side of the bezel. They are machine threaded with a bolt on the back, and then we have six more that go around the uh, outside perimeter here that hold the back uh, onto the can. So we'll flip it over and get those out. Got it flipped over. Uh, let's take a look at what we got here. Um, there is a really old label, which is pretty cool. It's really hard to read, but uh, it's instructions of uh, talking about how the importance of the ground lead. <laughs> which is uh, ironic as the uh, plug has had the ground lead removed by some uh, foolish individual. And uh, it has our, the, na the nameplate on there. 1L415. Some voltage information. And the original stamp of what color tube. So that's pretty cool. We got the original um, color tube. I don't know if it's a tube. It's actually original. I can tell it's been repaired at least uh, once or twice. But uh, that's the beauty of, uh, of neon tubes. Neon-filled tubes can be repaired. 
So, uh, anyway, get these screws out of the edge to uh, get the back off of here. Now, the uh, transformer is held onto the back as well with these four screws uh, surrounding the nameplate and this label. They, uh, I guess you call it uh, structural support perhaps for the uh, transformer. So uh, we'll get those as well. All right, now we have the perimeter screws and the transformer bolts out. We can remove the back. Reveal the inside. Um, in the center here, we have a traditional uh, Telecron clock motor here. This is the motor with the windings. This uh, aluminum part in here is the rotor. Uh, this 56, that might be a year date, year stamp. So if, uh, if that is 1956, this clock is uh, 64 years old, which is pretty awesome. Uh, it looks like we, what we have here is probably the original transformer. Uh, it seems to be in pretty decent shape. You may have heard when I plugged it in earlier, it's, uh, it's a little noisy. Uh, when it initially turns on, the uh, the face kind of acts as a, kind of a resonating speaker, I'm sure, as well. Uh, but uh, after about 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, it starts, uh, it warms up and quiets down a whole lot, so it's a lot quieter after a while, little while. Um, I got the wires labeled here because we're going to be changing out the uh, electrical cord here. But uh, we'll... One thing of interest and note is these are uh, original General Electric wire nuts, branded. So I imagine they're probably original. Um, and uh, as is this General Electric plug. There it is, GE. All right, and uh, what I was referring to, the uh, ground that has been removed from this cord, it's been snipped off there. Uh, before three-pronged grounded outlets were commonplace in the United States. Uh, it looks like GE used uh, a little pigtail ground uh, onto this uh, plug. This is actually a, a GE Midget Neon Transformer from uh, about the same era as this clock. But uh, this is the style that they had. They had this uh, two-prong plug uh, with a little ground pigtail and they used this little screw. You're supposed to screw onto the face, the outlet faceplate and then this would snap into there, so I guess you'd be grounded through the um, conduit box if you're uh, using conduit. So that was kind of their way of doing it back then. But uh, I'm going to replace this with an actual three-prong grounded plug of uh, modern technology, so that'll be a little safer. Um, considering this is a 2,000 volt transformer, and I don't want that, you know, in case it uh, starts arcing, to the uh, to the metal of the can. This ins insulation is a little dicey, looking sketchy there. Uh, I, and uh, you go to set up, try to set the clock. You get a nice bite from that 2,000 volt transformer. So if we ground that out, hopefully that'll uh, uh, re resolve that issue. I just discovered something fantastic. This uh, clock uh, set knob shaft is actually threaded in the middle, uh, so you can unscrew it and remove it so that'll be much easier trying to get this uh, assembly out of the bezel with that uh, so we'll disconnect the wires and then get these six face uh, bolts out of there okay so the neon tube is attached with little clips and brass nuts uh, five places actually I think all but one of them are broken but they're wired with copper wire. So I got this the perimeter six screws on the face removed and it should just lift out as a unit transformer, tube, clock, motor, and all. Yeah, I got it. There it is. All right.
All right, and uh, we got what appear to be six clips that hold it, hold the glass face into the bezel. So uh, I found a source online that told me the uh, size of the face is five, uh, 15 and 5 16 inches across. Uh, and I, uh, I reassembled all the broken chips of the face that I had to uh, see what measurement I could get and it came out to 15 and 7 16 so that's 1 16 uh, inch off the radius. Alright so uh, I got a 16 by 20 inch sheet of uh, 3 30 seconds inch glass. Uh, standard window thickness. I got that for this 5 bucks at a big box store and a circular glass cutter for like $8 on Amazon so we'll uh, see if we can cut out the correct sized face here. Got to score the line. I got it oiled already. That's all you need. All right, uh, here we are. Got the oil cleaned off. Got our score line going around there. And uh, I'm going to see if I can get this to crack uh, stress fracture with a thermal expansion. I'm going to heat it with a torch, see what happens. All right, and because I usually fail the first time I try something new, uh, I bought two of these glass sheets because I figured I'd mess up the first one, which is what indeed happened. Wow, good thing I'm wearing safety goggles. Don't try this at home, kids. So uh, we're gonna try a different technique uh, on this one and see if we can't get it to play nice for us. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to go out and buy some more and that, you know, put a damper on things. Eesh. Wanna break it, but not uncontrollably, you know? Oh man. Looks like it's fracturing for me. I think it's working. Knock on wood, right? Is that it? I think so. Right on. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Can you see it? I think these little edge nibbles will be all right. Very cool. All right, and here we are. The glass has been installed. Seems to fit quite nicely. A little bit of uh, room for wiggle room for error there if we needed to. Uh, but uh, looks like we're good to go. This uh, looks like a good bit of, bit of turquoise paint on here. I think this thing has been repainted like three or four times. Because the original manufacturer color uh, is listed as um, bronze, and it seems that this is kind of a copper plated, maybe so copper plated bronze, perhaps. Uh, but then we got I uh, see a, the brown, a white, a black, and then there's evidence of that turquoise. So, um, and this paint is kind of just chipping off. So I'll just leave it that, leave it like it is, and uh, kind of go with that patina look. But uh, all right, onto the onto the face. All right, so uh, with this face here, the uh, neon tube is still intact. Uh, the seller double boxed it uh, when uh, shipping it from New York, uh, but the courier still managed to break the face. Luckily, the neon tube is still intact, which is you know would be the more difficult part to replace, unless uh, you know you got a neon processing setup but it's got these clips here that like I said most of them are broken got little copper wires holding them on mostly just tie wires uh, I got one over here that's that seems to be intact if anybody knows uh, a source for these clips uh, let me know drop me a note in the comments below that would be nice uh, so what uh, but what I'm gonna do here is disconnect this transformer and uh, cause you can see these cloth electrical tape looks kind of sketchy to me so I, I took the electrical tape off. We got Fon stock clips on there. They're actually labeled. They got the brand name Fon stock on them. That's pretty cool. All right, and for the uh, primary leads, the 
transformer. I'm wrapping it with some uh, self-adhesive silicone tape. It sticks to itself. I'm covering the leads with that. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's better than places where it had, you know, none. So, <laughs> better than nothing. All right, and I got those little crispy grommets for the uh, transformer primary replaced with some new squishy rubber ones. All right, got the uh, neon back on and the transformer uh, reinstalled. My newly insulated wires. I put on some electrode boots. These are rated for 7,500 volts, so uh, that should be better than that cloth electrical tape we had on there. Very good. On to the wiring. I got it all wired back together here. Uh, I put in a little switch uh, that will uh, allow me to control it remotely. The Chinese say it's rated for a thousand watts. I don't know if I believe that, but the transformer is only uh, what, 18 milliamps, so it's, it's like 36 watts. So um, I think it should be uh, fine with that. I got the antenna for the switch hanging where that about where that hole is in the back because I think this metal body is kind of going to act like a Faraday cage so hopefully the signal will be able to get through that hole in the back. Um, but got this nice beefy uh, wire. It's what 14 gauge 14 gauge wire 2.08 millimeters squared for our metric friends and uh, Got a plug on the end. I might end up hardwiring it into a conduit junction box, but we got a plug on it for now. And we'll uh, plug it in and see what happens. Oh, uh, I was like, nothing. I bet the clock is working. The clock should be working. Yeah, the second hand's rolling. So, switch should be uh, set it, hold it to two seconds, I guess. And then hold this guy. There it is. Awesome. That transformer sounds a lot quieter. I wonder if there's getting some sort of uh, feedback on that poor insulation on the secondary wiring but anyway yeah that's awesome got a knot in here for strain relief and a brand new grommet as well so I like it successful and reassemble all right one more thing I'm gonna do here the uh, top hole got a little twisted somebody I don't know torqued the hole or something pulling off the wall and uh, also the outer edge of this can looks like somebody open it with a screwdriver, kind of like a paint can, so I'm um, going to use a crescent wrench to kind of straighten those back out. So. Bend it out until it matches the profile again. All right, I've got the uh, clock all assembled, and I have some Tapcon anchors in the wall up there. So now all we got to do is hang it up. There it is. Let's see if this switch works from all the way over here. Ready? Three, two, one. Yeah. There it is. Glowing up there. 
It's right at home above the 1946 Westinghouse. Fits right in there. Perfect. Have a good place to tell time in my uh, shop now. One thing I did not show was the uh, lubricating of the Telecron rotor inside. There are plenty of um, videos and uh, web pages on uh, information on that. This one had a B2 rotor in there. But anyway, I like it. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe for more neon related videos and we'll see you next time.